today a brand new episode of this video or this vlog and our focus is all about answering the question about infertility. Papaano mo malalaman kung baog ang partner mo? Guys, this is Berners Fase, and of course, this is gonna be our brand new episode of this channel today. So, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. At the same time, please don't forget also to click the notification bell for you to be notified with my succeeding uploads with this channel. And of course, please also don't forget to like this video. And of course, if you have some comments, you can have your comments down below and at the same time if you want your friends to know also the topic that we're going to talk today please share this video to them Tora! and at the same time today a brand new episode of this video or this vlog and our focus is all about answering the question about infertility paano mo malalaman kung baog ang partner mo by the way, disclaimer, I am not a medical professional, but of course, this vlog is based on what I know because of course, I am a nurse by profession. At the same time, I'm also a clinical instructor in one of the universities here in Cagayan de Oro City. So don't forget that this is just a disclaimer. I am basing this one based on what I know about the topic. Okay? So, papaano mo, as what I mentioned earlier, papaano mo sasagutin ang tanong, baog ka ba? Or baog ako? So, that is a very hard question to pose to someone, especially for a man, because of course, you don't know, uh, you don't know what is going to be his reaction about that specific question. Okay, what is infertility? Basically, infertility is the couple has an unprotected and frequent sexual intercourse for a year or more, but they were not able to conceive a child, or hindi po sila biniyayaan ng isang anak. So, with that note, according to statistics, there are actually 15% of this couple around the world or worldwide who are actually infertile or they are not capable of uh, conceiving a child. Spe especially for a woman, for a woman is because of course, it is also going to be based on the current condition of a man. So basically, if you're talking about infertility among men, the basic reason why there is going to be infertility is there's a problem with sperm production or there's a problem with sperm delivery. So that's going to be our topic today. So basically, uh, if you're going to talk about infertility among men, the main reason why there is infertility among men is there's a problem with its sperm production at the same time, sperm delivery. Let's talk about now the symptoms of infertility among men. So basically, if you're talking about infertility among men, these are the possible symptoms why there is infertility. The first one, problems with sexual function. So when you talk about problems with sexual function, it means that there is a problem with ejaculation. So the man or your husband could probably have this problem. It's because they might as well have problems also with the production of your semen. Or they might actually have problems with the production of the uh, liquid compartment or liquid component of the sperm. So that's going to be the, the first symptom and that's going to be problems with ejaculation. Our second symptom is pain, swelling, or lump that is present in the testicle. So, if, of course, if that's going to be present, you have to make sure that that is going to be properly evaluated. And if there is going to be pain, so therefore, there's a problem with sperm production. And if there will be problems or presence of lump in your scrotum, you have to let somebody check that one. At the same time, if there will be tenderness, you have to, to let the physician check. It's because that might actually going to be a medical condition that is going to be treated first in order for you to get treated also with infertility. Next symptom is recurrent respiratory infections or recurrent respiratory problems. So if this is going to be present, so it is going to be a main reason why, of course, there is going to be take, uh, there is going to be a problem with your immune system function. It's because you have frequent respiratory respiratory problem if this is not is gonna be present please check or please allow your medical physician or your doctor to examine you next symptom is inability to smell so if, if of course your your husband is actually experiencing this problem please let a physician check if that's gonna be a symptom for possible problems with infertility among men our next symptom is 
there is presence of abnormal breast enlargement or commonly for medical terms that is gonna be termed as gynecomastia. So if that's gonna be present, please let your physician check you because of course that might actually be precursor for the development of Cushing's disease or Cushing's syndromes or Cushing's condition and that, might, that is really needed to be evaluated by a physician. Next symptom is decreased facial or body hair. So of course, if there will be presence of this decreased facial body hair, there is a tendency that your husband is having problems with the release of your testosterone. And of course, testosterone is a very masculine hormone, so that's gonna be very relevant for the production of your hairs in the body. Of course, if there will be uh, enough uh, production of this hair, it means that your husband is very masculine, and of course, he is capable of impregnating of an individual or, or a woman. Our next symptom is lower than normal sperm count. Of course, if you're going to have a sperm evaluation, it is going to be seen in your uh, result that there is a problem with the sperm count. It might actually be less than 15 million per ejaculation, per ml per ejaculation. So there is a need for you to have uh, a treatment for that and that's going to be evaluated with the doctor. It's because, of course, that's going to be are relevant in order for us to identify if there is a normal sperm count. Hello! So today, we'll talk about the uh, risk factors for the development of infertility among men. So of course, these risk factors are probably factors that will brought about the presence of this condition. The first one is to we'll talk about uh, these risk factors and that's gonna be smoking tobacco. So of course, as what I've mentioned before, that tobacco is going to cause hypertension. So there is gonna be a problem with the de delivery of uh, enough blood to the area where it's gonna be required for the sperm to be produced. The next one is using alcohol. So when you use alcohol, of course, alcohol has this uh, depressant uh, property, so it might as well uh, depress the function of our reproductive system. The next one is using certain illicit drugs. Of course, if you're actually using this, what you call shabu or any form of drugs, it might as well depress the function of your reproductive system and that might actually contribute to the development of infertility among men. Next one is being overweight. So if you're gonna be overweight, there's a need for you to lose your weight because of course, if you are uh, overweight, there is gonna be a problem with the delivery of your uh, sexual hormones and at the same time, that's gonna be a factor for the, for the infertility among men. Next one is being severely stressed or depressed. Of course, being depressed or you are actually gonna be stressed, it means that there's a problem with your hormones. That's why it's going to be a factor for uh, the development of infertility. If you're depressed, there's a problem with your serotonin. That's why, of course, there will be decrease in your sexual arousal. If you're actually going to be stressed, it is also going to be depending on what level of stress you're experiencing then. So that's going to be another risk factor. Next one is having past or present infection. As what I mentioned before, infection is a factor for the development of your infertility among men. Because, of course, that's going to be an indicator that you have a problem with your immune system. Next is being, being exposed with toxins. Of course, if you're actually going to be exposed with toxins, of course, every day we're exposed with toxins. But, of course, we can actually get rid of that, especially if you're not going to go around the environment and at the same time avoid uh, crowded places. So that's gonna be one way preventing the presence of this or the occurrence of this infertility among men. Next is overheating the testicle. Of course, it's normal that the testicle is going to uh, react to the temperature in the environment. At the same time, if you are totally exposed with heat, that might actually damage the sperm that is actually produced or that's the sperm that is actually being stored in the testicle area. So it is going to be very important for you to remember that you have to make sure that you are going to be preventing yourselves from having been exposed with too much heat or too much cold. Next is having experienced trauma to the testicle. Of course, if trauma is present, if trauma or injury is present in a testicular area, it might as well create an injury also to the, 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 the sperm. So therefore, it might as well also decrease the number of viable sperm that is good for possible uh, impregnation or a possible conception to your wife. Next is having prior vasectomy or abdominal surgery. Of course, vasectomy is considered to be the permanent form of uh, permanent permanent form of contraceptive methods or contraception among men because of course the vas deferens are basically being cut and at the same time your sperm will not be able to travel is because of course the, the vas deferens are already cut and there's not going to be there's no conduit anymore for the travel of your sperm going to the uh, 
vast, vast deference or, or the epididymis and go, go, going to ejaculation. Next is having history of undescended testes. Of course, if you are going to be, uh, if you have experienced this, uh, undescended, undescended testes or, or medically known as your cryptorchidism is actually a factor for the development of uh, testicular cancer. But of course, this is going to be expected also if there is already going to be uh, what call this uh, medical diagnosis and at the same time for premature children and at the same time for those individuals who had been experiencing the, uh, hormonal problems already. Next one is you have been born with a relative of having reproductive disorder. So of course, uh, infertility might actually run in the family or based on genetics. So this, there is a need for us to remember that you have to uh, know the, ge the genetic genetic components of your partner because of course that's gonna be a guarantee that you have uh, going you are going to experience uh, this what you call conception especially if you're if you want to have a child in the future next is have certain medical conditions like tumors and testicles so that's gonna be a problem because of course if there will be presence of tumors it might as well contribute to the development of this infertility among men because of course that will affect the production of your sperm next is taking certain medications or probably you are being treated with uh, a radiation or any other uh, treatment that might as well create an impact to the development or to the uh, development of this infertility among men Hello once again ladies and gentlemen, this has been Nurse Success, so this is going to be a continuation of this vlog. So today, of course, that's going to be a continuation, so we'll focus now on the prevention of infertility among men. So this is going to be my own uh, understanding or my own thought about the preventive measures and what to do, especially if you're going to, if you don't want to experience this infertility among men. The first one is don't smoke. So we've mentioned before, or we've mentioned the risk factors that smoking is a factor for the development of this condition so it's going to be very essential for us to uh, make sure that you have to you don't smoke next one is limit or abstain from alcohol so of course one of the risk factor is uh, presence of alcohol consumption so as much as possible limit your intake of alcohol or as much as possible abstain from using alcohol our next preventive measure is don't use illicit drugs so of course we've mentioned in our risk factors that illicit drugs might actually be a factor so therefore don't use illicit drugs next is keep the weight off so of course being overweight is a factor for the development of this condition so therefore get rid of being overweight next is don't get a vasectomy so of course we've mentioned earlier that vasectomy is a factor for the development of this infertility among men because of course vasectomy is the uh, permanent method of contraception next is the next reason or the next preventive measure is avoid instances of overexposure to heat. So of course we've mentioned that of course if you're going to be exposed to overheat or exposed to too much heat that might lead to the production or that might lead to the destruction of your sperm. Next is avoid stress. Of course uh, avoiding stress or depression is a factor for the uh, management of your infertility among men. And of course lastly is avoid exposure to pesticides. So of course, these pesticides might actually have a problem or might actually have a contribution for the development of your male infertility. And at the same time, uh, you have to get rid also with the exposures with heavy metals. So that's it with regards to the preventive measures of male infertility. So I hope that you have uh, you have uh, an information that is vital for, the for, for you to know how to properly determine if your husband is experiencing this male infertility. So, and so if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and at the same time, please don't forget also to hit the notification bell for you to be notified with my succeeding uploads of this channel. And at the same time, please don't forget also to give your comments down below. And at the same time, don't forget to hit like and share this video also. And that's gonna be Nurse Say, the future of nursing. Bye for now! Tuara!